from Deuteronomy chapter 7, and we're also reading page 25 from Pigs in the Parlor, written by Fred Hammond and his wife. Okay. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. And thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they shall turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and make and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep in, unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep and the land which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people, and there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay thee will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. Verse 17, if thou shalt say in thine heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be affrighted of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptation which thine eyes saw and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the stretched out arm whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shalt the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God 
shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings in thy, thine hand and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou hast destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination unto thine house, mm, 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 lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Now, this is the word the Lord gave me, just popped in my head. Displacement. All right. The removal of something or someone that with something or someone that takes their place and enforce departure of people from their homes, the amount by which a thing is moved from its normal position. Now, I'm going to look at the word displaced so you get the verb. All right. Now, take over the place. To take over a place or a position to take over a role of someone or something. Wow. To cause to move from its pop, proper or usual place. Mm, mm, mm. To force someone to leave their home, either because of war, persecution, disaster, whatever. To remove someone from a job or a position. Wow. Or authority against their will. Now, this is what I ask you. Will you be displaced or will you do the displacement yourself? And now I'm going to read from Pigs in the Parlor, written by Fred D. Hammond and his wife. All right. Page 25. That's it. And just the end of that, which is page half of page 26. Excuse me, I got to get in position so I can read this and see it plainly with the light on it. Okay, now. Multiplied instances have been found where evil spirits were able to indwell persons through the rules of inheritance. If a child is told that he is like his parents and can expect to inherit their weaknesses, he becomes vulnerable. My own mother was a very nervous person. When I was a young boy, she had a nervous breakdown. I developed a fear that I would inherit this weakness. The fear of being nervous actually opened me to the reality. My nerves began to give way. It was as though something was inside my body and crawling all through me. I would become very weak and unable to fulfill my responsibilities as a pastor. The doctor put me on barbiturates, which made me so drowsy, I would have to go to bed. My workload would stack up and I would get more nervous. I was on a treadmill. <clears throat> Several times, I came near resigning my church and leaving the ministry. Five years ago, I was delivered from the demon of nervousness and related spirits. There has been no more crawling nerves and no more need for drugs. The demons that told me that I had to be like my mother were all liars. If we allow him to do so, did you hear what he said? If we allow him to do so, all right. If we allow him to do so, the devil will give us an inheritance. Huh, won't be God's, it'll be the devil's, and it won't be nice. All right, let me go on to reading. But the psalmist said of God, he shall choose our inheritance for us. That's Psalms 47, verse 4. I have found many others like myself who accepted the lies and fears 
suggested by the devil. Many persons are collapsing from a fear of mental illness because a person, excuse me, because a parent had this problem. The devil says, hmm, this is your inheritance. Do you know that a person can be so possessed by the fear of mental illness? Check that out. Do you know that a person can be so, wow, wow, I got to read this slowly because I want you to hear this. Do you know that a person can be so possessed by the fear of mental illness that he will eventually end up in a mental hospital? Mm, mm, mm. That's deep. 